Inflation seems to be on everyone's mind these days. And whenever the latest inflation figure is about to be announced, Americans everywhere hold their collective breath to see if prices are rising or falling. The inflation measure familiar to most people is the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. But are you aware there's a lesser known and very different version of that index preferred by economists? Welcome to Economics Made Simple. The version of CPI I'm talking about is called Core CPI. To help us understand Core CPI and what makes it a favorite of economists, let's check in with Clint Dahl. As you noted, a lot of fanfare goes around the Consumer Price Index release each month. The CPI reflects a basket of goods and services, or what consumers pay each month. This greater tendency of price volatility prompts economists to look past the headline CPI and more at core CPI, which they view as more representative of general prices. Core CPI will remove food and energy from that basket. Why is there an inflation measure that doesn't capture food or energy? In a word, volatility. Food and energy are subject to volatility that's not rooted in basic laws of supply and demand or monetary policy. Changes in weather conditions, natural disasters, political upheaval, and geopolitical crises are just some of the examples of usually temporary but often dramatic events that can have a major impact on food and energy prices. Here's a simple example of how economists might evaluate inflation through the lens of core CPI. Let's say that headline inflation has been making big jumps month to month, but the core CPI has been making smaller jumps. This might indicate to economists that food and energy prices are having an outsized impact on the headline number. It could further indicate to them that inflation at a fundamental level, the kind that is impacted by monetary policy, is weakening. If inflation is actually weakening rather than strengthening, the Fed may be less inclined to respond to the rise in headline CPI with monetary policy. This might explain what seems like a soft response by the Federal Reserve to the headline inflation numbers. Of course, many Americans may roll their eyes at the notion of an index that doesn't include food and energy. Nevertheless, central banks and economists might prioritize core CPI when taking action. But my guess is that it's the headline CPI, the one that includes food and energy, that concerns more Americans when it comes to their monetary policy. So if food and energy prices are going up, it might not be a bad idea to start tightening your budget and saving for the future. You may be right about that, Clint. And thank you for that informative, understandable explanation of core CPI. That's it for today's lesson. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and check back often for more Economics Made Simple. Joe Montana here. Click subscribe now and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. You'll be glad you did.